YouTube show. Any other common troubleshooting questions, you know, big, big mistakes you see newbies make that you want to maybe save, save us from? Yeah, I probably want to clear up this common misconception that the greenhouses are a natural step in the evolution of gardening um, or that it's like a necessary step for improving your gardening. Um, I, that's really not the case. It's kind of a whole other category. And if you think that just growing in a greenhouse will make your plants ha healthier and happier alone, it's you're gonna be disappointed because a greenhouse is just a different environment. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one that you control. So you can determine what the humidity and the temperature and the light levels and the water and the soil, everything. Um, so you can really dial in these parameters to optimize growth. Um, but it's, it's not just a golden ticket to happy plants. Uh, it'll take, there's a learning curve to growing in a greenhouse. Um, there's, you, you still have to kind of battle some of the same common issues, like keeping different plants and to have different needs in the same environment. Uh, and pest management is a whole nother thing in greenhouses as well. It is, but I will say that I like greenhouses because it gives me enough space to have a dedicated quarantine zone. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think is a really important step for people that are like, I guess, like advancing in their gardening uh, experience, because I can't, I, I've lost so many plants because someone will be like, oh, I thought of you and bought this cactus. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And I put it on my shelf. And then two weeks later, my whole collection has mealy bugs. Yeah. Or my whole collection has scale. And it's just, oh, it's such a pain to deal with that. But <laughs> when you have when you have a greenhouse, I just have this one uh, shelf that is over in the corner with like all the supplies. So it's like far away from all my other plants. Uh, any new plant that I get gets thrown on this quarantine shelf with a sticky note that says like when I put it there and then I'll keep an eye on it for a month. And if it looks good, then I will move it so it can join the rest of the plants in the greenhouse. Um, and that has saved a lot of headache. That's amazing. Do you use um, predatory insects in your greenhouse? Uh, I don't in, in my personal one right now, um, but I have used them in the past and they're really effective. Um, yeah. Like ladybugs are a good one. There are, uh, like you can do praying mantises too, lace wings. Lace wings, um, I've heard a lot of people do. There's this other one that's specifically good for tackling scale and I'm, it has a funny name and I can't remember it. It's like super something uh that's we'll put another the name in the show notes <laughs> yeah yeah great um great. but there yeah pests live pest control is really effective and i i try to stay like organic you know i don't want to i'd never use any systemic pesticides on my plants mm -hmm. um because i live on the puget sounds and i'm concerned about you know that stuff leaching out um i also try not to use like harsh fertilizers i'm pretty sparing on fertilizer in general um mm -hmm or I'll use like seaweed based stuff or compost worm mm -hmm. castings. Um, yeah, but having live pest control makes it so that you don't have to use harsh chemicals, which is a big plus in my book. Yeah. And is there any other troubleshooting for managing humidity and like rot in and mold and stuff in a greenhouse besides ventilation? Um, I mean, ventilation is your number one defense against humidity. Um, I think that there are some other tricks that you can use if you're dealing with root rot. Um, I guess having airflow underneath your pots is, is kind of a, a hidden secret. Um, you might have noticed that some greenhouses have plant benches, but the bottom of the bench is actually like a grate or like corrugated, mm -hmm. not corrugated. Um, it, yeah, it's like a metal grate so that air and water can freely flow through. And that's pretty important because it means that air gets over, assuming you have holes in the bottom of your pot, which you probably should, um, like air gets to the roots as well, which is where plants take in most of their air, but also that dries out the pot a lot faster, which will help prevent mold and, and root rot. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's really interesting. Um, and then what's like the ideal, I guess it depends on what you're growing, but where, what's the ideal temperature and humidity you're trying to keep greenhouses at? Yeah. Um, like you said, pretty dependent on what you're growing. Um, 
<laughs> if I'm being really honest, I keep it at whatever is comfortable for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the plants don't complain very vocally, so, but I do. Um, <laughs> so I, I mean, I, it's warm, obviously. Uh, I think like a good place for a greenhouse to be is, is probably around 80 or 85 degrees mm-hmm. Fahrenheit, um, which might be toasty, but if it's not humid in there, it'll be a lot more bearable. Yeah. Um, and I try to keep out as much humidity as possible in general. Um, if I were growing like a lot of tropicals in my greenhouse, uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't, but tropicals are indoors. Everything else is in the greenhouse. So yeah, I just do low humidity. Okay, cool. And if uh, listeners, if any of our plant friends are interested in a deeper dive on regulating humi- humidity, we have a lecture in the Garden Society that breaks down absolute versus relative humidity. And actually our horticulturist and residents gives like equations to figure out wow. how to tinker with it in a greenhouse if you really want to nerd out. So if you want to take it to the next level. Um, so any advice, any parting advice? This has been so informative. Any parting advice for us beginner greenhouse, aspiring greenhouse people? Yeah, this one it might be a bit of a, Debbie Downer, but I would say, uh, think carefully about getting a greenhouse because it's a, <laughs> I mean, it's a big investment, both in terms of like money and time, but also space. And if you're not in a place in your life where you expect uh, like to be there for a while, then a greenhouse probably isn't the move. Uh, you can totally tide yourself over with a cold frame um, or, or something a bit smaller, like a, even a grow tent. Um, mm-hmm. But, but greenhouses are, they're like, kind of like pets, like they're commitments, at least a 10 year commitment, um, unless you have a way to transport it. So, and I think, and selfishly, one of the reasons that I say that is because all of the best greenhouses I've ever been to are ones that the plants have taken over. When you, when you let the plants like grow up into the rafters and like wind their way around the support beams it totally transforms the space. And that is the, the ultimate. Do, 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 do